So, hi. I will present you SpineNXDL, which is an alternative hardware description language for digital hardware. So, uh, during this presentation, I will first give you a little introduction about SpineNXDL, how it comes, how, how we can use it. And then I will give some different with VHDL and Verilog. And then I will give you many little examples to show you the advantage of SpineNXDL and how it is different, what it gives you by using some abstraction and by using some software engineering approach to do hardware design. So uh, this, presentation will, okay, this presentation will only be about synthetizable hardware. It's really not about um, a simulation thing. Uh, but you can do it? Or, so is Spinel, uh, HDL beneficial to simulation as well? You can simulate the output netlist. So, um, <laughs> yeah. To simulate the um, generated the, the hardware, you can use um, regular tools because the output netlist of SpineNXDL is VHDL and Verilog, so you can do the simulation of those output netlist. So yeah, this is the context. I don't have many time to uh, to give you my opinion on that, but uh, basically what I think is VHDL 2002 and Verilog 2005 are really bottleneck in terms of engineering by many aspects. And VHDL 2008 and System Relog will not save all of us because of EDS support, because even of features that they bring that are not so good finally. So I don't really have many time to talk about that, sorry, but... So Spinal HDL. Um, it is an open source project which starts um, in December 2014. It focuses exclusively on RTL description and as you can see here, there is the flow. So um, you can describe your hardware by using some Scala files. Then you ask the SpineHDL compiler to translate it into regular VHDL and Verilog that you can uh, synthesize or uh, simulate. And so this made um, SpineHDL directly compatible with all IDEA tools because it's regular VHDL and Verilog. And you can also integrate some legacy IP like a uh, block RAM for, from Clydings so or from Atera, I don't know, or some more complicated things inside the Spinal HDL hierarchy by using a black boxing system. So it's quite compatible with uh, existing flow and existing IPs. Then about the abstraction level, it, it starts at the same level than VHDL and Verilog, a, a little bit different. But the thing is then on the top of that, you can build a new abstraction level. You can go away from this mess of wire, which is hardware design, to really say what you want. So, yeah, just before example, some last points. So, there is no logic overhead in the generated code, because SpineHDL is not a HLS approach. It's really much more like an RTL approach, as VHDL and Verilog, where you have to design gates, where you have to design registers and things like that. So, there is no overhead. You will not lose performance by using it. Um, all names and all um, your component hierarchy is preserved during the translation from SpineLXDL to Verilog and VHDL. So you can uh, simulate it by using your favorite simulator. You can look at the wave and then very easily, um, understanding, by understanding the wave, catch up where is the bug in SpineLXDL if you have one. And basically, SpineLXDL is not really a language. And this is the main point about SpineLXDL. SpineLXDL is a language, it's, not, it's, a, it's a Scala library. So Scala is a general purpose programming language. And SpineLXDL is a library implemented on the top of it to allow you describing your hardware. And it could seem strange to have a language into another one, but it is probably one, on the, one of the best points of SpineLXDL. So I will comment that later. So yeah, this is a simple example, a very random one which has no interest in practically, but imagine you want to design this little piece of hardware with a single condition to derive some combinatorial logic, some register without reset, some register with reset. In VHDL and in Verilog, because you have to use a simulation construct to build hardware, to infer the hardware, because VHDL and Verilog were initially made for simulation purpose, not for inferring hardware. So you would have to write three different processes you have a lot of redundancies because, for example, this condition is duplicated three times, which is not very clean, which is not very uh, safe because you can create bugs by having duplications, 
at many places. So this is how we are used to do. And this is how you can do with an hardware dedicated syntax. And this is some Spain LXDL example. So first difference, you can define things explicitly as signals, like my register. Is a register not because you are assigning it, it into a clocked process, but because you define it directly at the definition. I want a reg of this data type. Uh, I want a reg of this data type with a reset value to zero. So because things are explicit, now you, you don't have to write process and this kind of things. And you can write, for example, that, I, that you want my signals to be false by default. And then when the code is true, then you can assign all of those guys in the same conditional statement. So another little example. <coughs> this one is just to compare and just to understand the abstraction level of spinach there, right start. So if you want to define a simple timer component, as you can do in VXDL and Verilog, it's very similar, like you can define, yeah. It's based on Scala, so it's much closer though to um, software design in terms of syntax. You can define a timer class with some construction parameters. This is like a generic or a parameter in Verilog. Then uh, this class will extend component to say this class is a component, so it's a hierarchical element of my design. Then you can define IO into uh, input outputs into a bundle. Bundle is a concept of hardware data structure in Spain LXDL. Then can you find inputs and outputs of your components? It's very easy. Then can you find a counter into inside your timer, which is a register of this data type? Then you can write conditions, assign it, other conditions, reassign it. So last assignment twin, last assignment twin, like in VXDL and Verilog. Then you can do assignment. So <coughs> if you know how to do VXDL and Verilog, it's not so far. You can use it by the same way, it's just you don't have to care about process and things like that. But then um, I will start with the fun stuff. So imagine you want to have a handshake bus of color. So by handshake bus of color, I mean a stream of data which carry colors like a valid and a ready flag as arbitration and a payload as an RGB data structure. And OK, you have a source handshake bus of color. You want to queue it inside a FIFO, and then you want to connect it to the sync and check this of color. So in VHDL 2002, it is really kind of boring because you have to define X signals one by one. In many cases, you can not really use records there because you want to have them uh, parameterized by generics, so you can't really use records there in all cases. Then uh, the most boring part is probably about instantiating the component itself where you have to bind each signal one by one, which is very error prone, which is very copy past work, which is a donkey work maybe. So in Spain and HDL, things are much more object oriented, which means, so yeah, for example, if you want, in Spain and HDL, the concept of handshake uh, bus is named stream. So if you want to define a source stream and a sync stream, you say, um, I want a source and a sync, which are stream of RGB color with this parameterization. So you can already much more use data structure, which, which have parameterization, which have inner parameterization. You don't have, you are not bound at this level. And um, as instance, to insert this FIFO, you just say, I want a FIFO, a stream FIFO, with this data type has um, elements which are stored by the FIFO. You don't have to bind uh, all signals of your data structure into a single acidologic vector anymore. Then you say the depth that you want. And then th this is the thing. If you want to access uh, the push port of the FIFO, you say fifo.io.push. You don't have to bind things. You, really, you directly have access to them by using this kind of object oriented way. Like a FIFO is an object. You can say, I want to access this attribute of the FIFO. Then here, for example, uh, it's written that you take the source stream, then you connect it to the push part of the FIFO, and here it, you take the pop part of the FIFO and you connect it to the sync. So it is better than this already, but it could be better, and I will come on a better way to do it. So basically, stream is not something that comes magically from Spain XDL compiler. It's something which is implemented on the top of it by using regular syntax of it, of Spain XDL. So it is a class with a type parameter here, 
which extend bundle because this class represents a hardware data structure, so it should extend bundle. Then you can define element into your data structure has a valid flag and a ready flag, a payload uh, instance of this parameterizable type. So you can use this data structure um, as a slave input of your uh, component or as master output of your component. It's not like records where you have all signals that can only be in one direction. It's not explained there how to do that, but it is really uh, useful and easy to do. And then there is a thing. This data structure, you can add functions in, functions in it, like the operator that we have seen there to connect In, in VHDL and Verilog, uh, function, task, and procedure are not that much useful because inside them you can't define what you want. You have to define a re relationship between um, outputs and inputs of the function, but you can define inside them a register, you can instantiate a component, you can do all the tricky stuff that you want. You are really limited with them. But here you can really do what you want. Like can define a queue function, which will take as parameter how many big you want the queue to be. And then this function will create, for example, a new FIFO internally, a new component. So. And then it will connect uh, the stream on the one you are calling it to the perf part of this FIFO. And this function will return the output part of this FIFO. So it is, it is really simple, but in fact, there you go. In place of writing all this stuff, which is already better, than regular VHDL, you are just writing this, like you want a source and a sync stream of RGB colors, and then you say, you take your source, you want to queue it, we have FIFO of 16 elements, and then you connect it to the sync. And there, you are starting to going away of the mess of wire of hardware design, you are just saying what you want, and this is working, you can, you can write a bug like in that, you can do mistake in wiring, you can do these kind of things. So, it's, it's not only, you, you can go further than, like imagine you want to do this hardware, like you have a um, source stream of color, this is a random example, but it uh, is an example. Imagine you have a um, source um, handshake, a source stream of color, you want to throw a transaction of this stream when they are black, so you need to add these arbitration gates and this check. Then from this point, you want to add a pipelining stage to have a better maximal frequency or to have a one depth FIFO storage, I don't know. So you need to add that. So in VLDL, probably if you have to do that, you will do it by hand and it's really error prone. It's, if you do error in the arbitration, it's always a lot of time to find out where is the bug in your arbitration. But here, um, there is how you can do it in Spain LGDL. I mean how you can do it by using the library which is implemented on the top of Spain LXDL. Like, you can define a source stream of RGB color, then you can say, I take my source stream, I want to throw a transaction when the source payload is black, and then, which this function throw and will return this stage, this, this point, and then you say, I want to stage it. And this stage function will create this hardware for you. And then it returns this, this node, and then you name it sync. So, Really, you are, you, are, you are saying what you want and not how really it works signals by signals. And this is not magic here. You can do, um, you can navigate to, this, to the implementation of this function and this is pure RTL implementation. It's not from the Spine HDL compiler. So another example, um, state machine. So <coughs> you can design state machine as you do in VXDN and Verilog by using switch statements and things like that. But you can also use the state machine tool. So state machine tool is one time again implemented on the top of Spin LDL. It's not something integrated in it. And if you want to do this state machine, <coughs> so you can say, I want a new state machine. I want state A, B, C, which are states. State A is my entry point. Then you can define some signals inside it. And then you can say state B on entry, I want to set my counter to zero. State B, when it is active, I want to count up. When my counter is four, I want to go to state C. And then on state B, when it exits, I want to put my IO result to true. So it's just an example that Spinal allow you to rise your level abstraction. But it, 
It's not because it's implemented in it. It's because its syntax is flexible enough to allowing you to build this abstraction. State machine is not magic. Really, it's just software engineering with hardware design combined together. So another example, uh, imagine you want to do that. You have a bus like an Axilite or an APB one, I don't know. Then you want from this bus be able to drive a signal A and B, which are inside of 32 bits. So you want to have some register here, which are write only from this bus. Then you do some calculation, like multiplication between both, and then you want to be able to read the result from this bus. So if you want to do that in VRG and Verilog, you will have to, yeah, to, to manage the bus timings by hand to do some switch cases. So it could be alright, but it's not the only solutions. So here there is an example. For example, if you want to create an axilite for a bus, you can write it like that. And then you can use an axilite slave factory tool. So this tool is one time again implemented on the top of SpinXL, it's not integrated inside it. And this tool will allow you to specify your register mapping by an, ab by an abstract way without having any, any knowledge of uh, the bus timing. Then, like, you can say A is um, something created from the factory has a write-only register of this data type mapped at this address. And the same for B. And then you can do some calculation here with result. And then you can say, I want my factory to make uh, the result readable at the address 8. And so this specification here is completely abstract from the fact that it is an axilite one. You can replace it here by an uh, APB one and it will work directly. So, and behind that there is <coughs> a lot of software engineering, like there is HashMap that you can use to elaborate your design and this is, this is used behind the sensor. There is um, abstract classes, there is abstract functions, there is uh, irritancy, irritancy? Yeah. Inheritance. Uh, yeah, inheritance, exactly. <coughs> and yeah, there is many things that you can do. So, uh, last example, this is just a demonstration project that I have made uh, fully in Spain LGL just to, to check that it works correctly and it's not too much buggy. And so this is a kind of little SOC which works on FPGA with an RISC V CPU, with instruction cache, a GTAG chain to debug it, some uh, SDRM controller, one chip RAM, APB bridge for low performance uh, peripherals, GPIO, timer, UART, and VGA. Um, this is an AXC uh, for interconnect, this is a PB interconnect, and there is some sample of code which are interesting inside it. Like, for example, to implement, to, for example, to instantiate this APB bridge from AXI, like, from AXI4, it's just writing that. You say, I want my bridge with this parameterization and this is done. And to instantiate all this um, decoding stuff for the APB with all those connections between components, it's just saying, I want an APB tree decoder. My master is the APB bridge IO APB, and there you can give a list of slaves, like timer controller IO APB is mapped at this address with this address range. And you know, it's in VRGL, it's and in VRGL, it's so boring to do that. So here it's just saying what you want, and you get it. Then there is another pattern, though it is for the axi four side, and this one uses a data model. Uh, pattern, like you can create an axi for crossbar factory, then you can feed it with some data model by saying, I have this list of slaves that are mapped there, you have this list, this list of master, and they can access those slaves, and then you say, I tell you everything, please build yourself. So you can really do software engineering to design your hardware with this approach. And yeah, this is, this is all for this presentation about Spain and LGDL. Um, you can find uh, everything open source uh, in this repository. There is our like, documentation which starts to be uh, good, I think. There is some ready to use project to help you if you want to try it and some communication channels. So do not hesitate to, to call on them if you have some issue to start up with tools or anything. So this is all, thank you. Ah, to compare it with Chazel, so basically I start to work with Chazel. I was happy some months with it. That was two years ago and, or three years ago. But basically, uh, it appeared that there was a lot of issue with it. 
and like for example clock domain support which has very um, badly done and there was regularly some issue about it but no no but the, um, there was no move on the Kaiser stuff so you can also find a list of things that I don't agree with Kaiser in the design on the fact section of the online documentation and yeah maybe Kaiser is much more about a very large implementation of the idea uh, Spain HDL is much more about a VHDL implementation of the idea, which is we check more things and more stuff. But really, really it looks like in surface is the same, but really there is many differences behind the same. Like, yeah, you have to, to check the fact. Okay. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of okay, so this way, we can move that way. <coughs> So, um, so basically, yeah, uh, how to, to map some pure Scala into hardware? I, it's your question. Like using HashMap and things like that. Could you make a generic library that works both on the no, you and the HDL? Using so you, you, if you can writing software and make it able to run in hardware and software, no, it's not the case. So Spain HDL is not an HLS approach. It's really an RTL approach where you use Scala as an elaboration tool to design what you want by saying, I want this register, I want this register, I want to do this operation. But Spain HDL is not about translating an algorithm into hardware. It's much more about saying what you want explicitly and you get it. But you can use HashMap to do the elaboration of, of your hardware. You can use all these kind of things like dynamic list and but has an elaboration tool like a for generate in VHDL or a if generate in VHDL, these kind of things. Yeah, so how I specify a clock for a flip flop though, so basically it's much better than VHDL because it is implicit, so you can define area of your design which are under the effect of a given clock and reset configuration, and then everything inside it, all subcomponents will automatically get it. So, um, yeah, I had a slide, but I haven't the time to talk about it. There will be a discussion session uh, after two, three talks after this, so we will have more time to discuss, maybe in more depth, these kind of things. Uh, more questions? Yeah. Yeah. I've used a few of those tools that so which error message you get when it doesn't work? So basically you have much more confidence when you generate the Spain um, netlist, you have then much more confidence than it's working re physically in, uh, for real than a handwritten VHDL one. Because Spain LHDL do a lot more check by default than, uh, sin yeah. It do a lot of check directly than, like for example, if you check that you don't have comment for loops, it will check that you don't have uh, with uh, mismatch, these kind of things. And if you have an error, it will print you where in your Spain HDL description there is something wrong. It will give you the name of the signal. So really, it's maybe even less easy than VHDL to remove bugs from a Spain HDL description because yeah, I made, so it checked a lot of much more things and I put a lot of intention to have nice printed uh, error message with the print stack of the execution of the Spain LGL description and these kind of things. So it's not really messy. It, all right. I have to try to give, an, uh, to get a good idea of it. Uh, uh, okay, how many questions do we have? Because it's really, really running out of time. So one, two, three, four, five. It's gonna be too much, guys. Um, can some of the questions be put in the discussion session afterwards? <laughs> Anybody going to say among you? No? Okay, go ahead. Uh, Try to be quick, please. Quick question. Yeah, at the beginning uh, of the presentation, you said you're mainly going to focus on synthesizable logic. Yeah. And then I'm just wondering, just curious. Uh, slide seven, if you can go real quick. Yeah. Uh, my signal falls, how is that going to translate 
Ah, so there will be three process generated from it exactly like there, exactly the same. Okay, so it's just a direct map. Yeah. Okay. But how do you distinguish between blocking and non blocking? Sorry? How do you distinguish between blocking and non blocking? Oh, um, Spanish like DL all is, uh, how do you distinguish in between blocking and non blocking? So in Spanish like DL, by default, it is, uh, I don't know which is one, but it is like the default, well, like this one here. You can do the, the other one by using another syntax too. And just also translation question, a similar thing. You had a multiplication somewhere, right? How is that translated? How much control do I have over that? Um, so how the multiplication is translated into VHDL, exactly the same than in VHDL. Okay. So then if you want to use uh, SPGA dedicated blocks and things like that, uh, okay. you can instantiate a black box or you can try to write it by the way that the synthesis tool will understand it. That, but the, there is no magic between in the translation, so it's one to one. Uh, yeah, well, if I don't trust my no jail, is there any way to make a formal verification uh, against what I have as my no jail and what I have as my So uh, if you, to, to about uh, formal verification between the input spinal HDL and the output, there is no formal verification about it because basically it's not required because you are verifying the output netlist. You are not ver doing your verification stuff on the spinal DL description. You are verifying the VHDL generated files. So it's why I don't really care about it being formal. But I have a good confidence in the translation process.